When I utter the words Mr. T, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is it? Is it the famous actor from the 18th? Or perhaps a professional wrestler who was into WWE? Well, I find it insulting that you dare speak of those things while ignoring that he is the one and only host of... The World's Craziest Fools! Hello, Synergetics, and welcome back to another episode of Investigation Behind the Media, a show that changes its name and quality so often it's as inconsistent as Ray's parentage. Get it? Because uh, Ray's parent, Ray's parents, are so unexplained that um, oh shoot, forget it. Some of you might not even be Star Wars fans, anyways. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on from this low-quality Star Wars video essay, I shall now discuss the topic of this episode, and that is the television show World's Craziest Fools. It ran for around two 10-episode series from 2011 to 2013 on BBC3 and was hosted by Mr. T himself. In essence, it's basically just Mr. T sitting at a desk uh, presenting the, the segment and just doing some voiceover for it while royalty-free music plays in the background. Speaking of, that reminds me. There's also a British guy who, vo who voices like a segment in the middle called Fool News or something. All in all, I have to say, the show feels kind of empty. Like, I don't know, any time I start watching a clip from the show, it seems like Mr. T is tired as hell of it and just wants to get out of the studio ASAP. And as I said, it it's really basic as a show, it's just fail compilations with Ooh. Mr. T slapped on it. But anyways, enough about my opinion. Let's go to my infamous review section. Although, yeah, my review is technically my opinion, so... Whatever, forget I, forget I said that. Overall, I give this show a 6.5 out of 10. It's... although it's not really the best idea, it's pretty original and if I'm being honest, it's better than it sounds when you watch the show. At times though, it does kind of feel like filler content. Like for example, sometimes they use kind of like the same kind of like catchphrase um, twice in a segment or an episode or whatever and yeah, it, it does feel like they put like a minimal amount of um, effort into this. Plus, for a show that's centered around 
um, Mr. T in his iconic I pity the fool catchphrase, he isn't very present um, in the show. For example, as I told you in the middle of the show, um, this guy, this dude named Rupert Vansittart or something, um, takes over um, voiceovering and uh, the voice is a segment called Full News and also another one I think is called Five Rules to Be a Good Insert Blank, which I didn't tell you about, but it's also pretty simple because it's basically just like five random wacky pictures of like, um, I don't know, um, soldiers doing stupid things and uh, the guy does some voiceover and says, oh, um, this is something you should not do, like uh, riding on a goat, that's something you shouldn't do. Speaking of the animations, it reminds me a lot of the drawings on WikiHow articles and I don't know how I feel about that. Although, I will give credit where credit is due, Miss Ruti is quite funny at his job. Heck, I'd say this show is even better than, than the newer episodes of Star Wars. Even IMDB agrees with me. So here, as you can see, um, World Craziest Fools has a rating of 7.3 stars out of 10. And Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has a rating of 6.7 stars out of 10. So... Your play. And I will say, Mr. T does give some pretty good advice. Such as... You know things are bad when nature is mocking you! Or even... In his face. Life's tough. The earlier you learn that, the better. But now, on to the long-awaited... Investigation. So, there's not a lot of information about how this series came to be. I searched countless times on the top results for some information, but... nothing. I read the Wikipedia article and analyzed every single sentence. Nothing. But as they say, desperate times call for desperate measures. So, I clicked on page 2 of Google. There, I found a Facebook page for the series. And I thought, well, maybe this could contain information as how this series was created. <laughs> Nothing. For a while, it, it seemed like the world had turned against me. I was all alone. Until I saw an article on TV.com. So I clicked it. I checked it. What did I see? NOTHING! So then, I looked about three more hours on the interwebs until I realized that everything I needed was already on Wikipedia. It's just that the information was so basic, I skipped it over. Anyways, enough of this rant. <laughs> Let's get this party started. So, World's Craziest Fools is a show made and produced by Rough Cut TV. Something tells me you might recognize them from their groundbreaking series, such as, um, let's say, A Dog of War. Or Corrupt FM, Feet Ed Sheeran, even Jerk. So basically what happened is BBC3 took in the program and believe it or not, it was actually quite popular. Now, I'm no TV executive, but I'm pretty sure that if I had a show that had 756,000 viewers on its premiere, I would be pretty happy. In fact, I did the math and each episode has approximately 686 or 686,000 400 viewers. Even the lowest viewed one attracted 608,000 people to watch it when it aired. So, props to them. It was eventually renewed for a second and final season in 2013. In the present day, there are many television companies all around the world still airing reruns of the show in places like Canada. New Zealand, even Denmark. Oh, uh, 
little side note, I hate to bring opinions in the um, investigation section of this video, but I do recommend uh, watching the second season of the show instead of the first. There's a big upgrade in quality, um, and it's better editing, better clips. I don't know, maybe it's because of the change of producers, but still, I found it really, really enjoyable. I recommend probably checking it out on BBC iPlayer if you want to have a quick laugh or two. In conclusion, World's Craziest Fools was a short-lived yet kind of funny show that will live in our hearts forever. Oh, and by our hearts, I mean the Facebook group I mentioned earlier. It's not the best in quality, it's quite obscure, but it's still really worth watching and I'm really glad that Mr. T stepped in to collaborate instead of some boring, unfunny guy. Although if it were me, I would definitely make sure to improve the writing a little bit, because it's kind of cheesy and... I don't know, it's for little kids anyways. And even with our best efforts, nothing will ever, ever be as funny as Shrek. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sorry this took such a long time to upload. It. This is probably my most complex video yet. It required quite a bit of work, even though it doesn't show. So I'm sorry for the wait. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, I would appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe, or maybe comment it down below your opinions on it and what can I do to improve. Um, also, uh, check out my new Twitter account and possibly um, reply to the post I'm going to make about this video. Um, some ideas on what I could cover on my next episode of Investigation Behind the Media. But anyways, see you later. Peace out.